the construction of the triple complex building at Dr. John Kering Memorial University of Science and Technology is finally completed. The university's vice chancellor, Dr. Abraham Matoj, confirmed to SSBC in Poor recently. Dr. Abraham Matoj said the newly constructed administrative and academic block is part of the plan to change the face of the university. Since my appointment on 9th, 2019, as Vice Chancellor of Dr. John Garan, Memorial University of Science and Technology, uh, when I came, there were a lot of challenges. The first challenge was people wanted the university to be in Dubai itself because of problems of 2013 and 2015. Uh, I struggled to bring it down because if at all we stayed in Duba, would be paying a lot of money or rent. And I thought uh, it is better we come to the real compass in Bor. Uh, so that was one challenge. The other challenge was uh, during that time, uh, the university was not functioning uh, efficient uh, because even the light electricity used to work for only one hour and all the teaching staff and workers at 12 noon then the university is empty everybody has gone so the work was not uh, well and also the academic activities were not uh, well addressed there were no proper regulations related to examinations and then there was a system of carryover we were so lousy and that in fact uh, encouraged uh, many students not to do their uh, academic work uh, very effectively and uh, and many others and the worst thing is that uh, the university is in container uh, lecture halls, offices, and libraries, even laboratories. And these containers were intended for at least a number of hundred students. But the number has grown as a university. They can no longer accommodate at least uh, over 2,000 students. So that was a big issue. and. Uh, and I thought it that uh, there is no way we have uh, to fix these uh, uh, important problems. So we developed uh, all the regulations and we de decided now uh, to build uh, lecture halls. Uh, initially our plan was to build uh, 10 lecture halls and 10 offices. But later on, the architectural design uh, resulted to having uh, at least 10 lecture halls, as they were, and then 23 offices. So we constructed them. Uh, some people suggested, let us just make two lecture halls with local materials. I said I will never, never build with uh, local materials in this university. This university has a name and is the face of South Sudan, a university it is a fright and therefore it is created by South Sudanese themselves and development must start here. We are independent country and this is peace time and this time we must construct with permanent buildings, buildings that will last for long. When we invited the president, the letter went and then he found that uh, as a, a head of the country, there are so many things in the pipeline for him, so many programs to do. And he found that it was too soon. And the president said, we will inform you uh, for a time. So we told him uh, we are flexible. 
That is why the 7th of July uh, did not materialize. And because of time also, uh, last Thursday, I was called by senior advisor, uh, Honorable Kual Manyang Duke, that the president has gone to Kampala for a meeting which was not uh, a program, and it is an important meeting, and he will come back on Friday, and therefore uh, the likelihood he will continue to Wale to, to bore for the inauguration. So that's why I came earlier and I informed the teams uh, and we are now ready to receive him. Uh, on the 7th, uh, we really planned that it should be within the independence uh, so that uh, this project is added into achievements of the government uh, during the independent uh, period. And therefore, when the changes came in until now, we are still expecting, and it was put, if 30th today is a multi day, it was also be a good opportunity to inaugurate uh, this building. But if uh, it is not possible today, definitely on Monday uh, it may be inaugurated. So that thing is just uh, an issue of time when the, the project will be inaugurated. The university was first established in 2007 as an institute for science and technology before it was upgraded into a full university in 2010. I'm an assistant professor, Manipola Chuas. Uh, I'm the lecturer in the College of Science and Technology, Department of Chemistry. Uh, I was the former executive director in the office of the vice chancellor, and uh, now I'm uh, heading for my PhD. Uh, and uh, after I come back, then I wish to work for this university. Uh, this university initially was established in 2007 as uh, Dr. John Garang de Mabure Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, with a capacity of 104 students. Uh, I myself, uh, I was uh, the first student among the past group to, to enroll in this university in 2008. So the number uh, that was meant for this uh, free fab is 104 only. So it, it has exceeded its current capacity, given that the, the number has gone to 1,500. It, it multiplied 10 times more. So, uh, and by this, the classes were inadequate. Uh, you could share one class uh, with uh, seven other classes uh, or six other more classes. By doing this, you may not finish your curriculum on time. Uh, it will give you a crack program. Uh, when next time, students may not understand more. But now, you will be having your own class, you schedule it with your students, so you will be finishing your curriculum on time. Uh, so uh, that was a challenge, and, and now it is covered. Precisely as Michael Abijov, I work as a, a deputy academic registrar in the university, and I I lecture in the College of Education. I do lecture uh, curriculum development and development of psychology as one of the educational sciences in the college. Dr. John Garang Memorial University of Science and Technology is one of the public universities in the country. It was a, a project university and it was an institute in 2008 before I independent. But immediately, a during uh, uh, President Omar Hassan al-Bashir when he was uh, uh, campaigning in 2010, he upgraded to a university. The responsibility was taken up by the government. By that time, the number of working force was too small and the students were few. So, uh, currently, the lecture halls we have are, are few and they are outdated. They are no longer accommodating the number of uh, students that we have. So I'm um, in particular very happy 
for having a new a structure established, constructing within uh, the capacity of uh, the university. So I'm very happy uh, with the, the university administration, particularly uh, Professor Abu Matoj, who is the vice chancellor of the university, and his two deputies, and uh, the whole university administrations. I'm very happy for what they have done for our institutions. As a, a young institutions and the young nations, we are still trying to 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 develop from the scratch. So I'm happy seeing the new buildings and seeing the new lecture hall with some offices. So it may accommodate a good number of students. Right from now, we will still have more uh, enrollment because we used to have very few plan numbers because we had no lecture halls. But currently, as we have these 10 lecture halls, we will be able now to enroll more students. And so it will be a help to the institution, it will be a help to the nation. Professor Dr. Abraham Matoj said, apart from changing the face of the university, they are going to transform the university into a world-class university. I have already started changing the face of the university in two areas. One, we have reviewed the curriculum and we have a streamlined courses towards science and technology aspect. And we have introduced a semester system, a semester system very effective in the sense that when a student fail, they have to sit their self-elementaries to go to the next class. That is, we have in fact dropped the lousy system of carryover. Carryover was misleading the students. Now it is going far, far well. And changing the face of the university in the academic area, we have already started graduating all the badges when I came here, there was no graduation done at all. Well, there were two vice chancellors ahead of me. So that alone, uh, people were caught unaware, and they were so excited in the whole town that uh, it is the first time to, for them to see the graduation ceremony in the university. And that has motivated or raised the morale of the students because they know that they will, in fact, graduate at the end of the year. Like this year, we are going to have graduation ceremony is in December. So that system, in terms of the academic curriculum review and all the activities of academic, you know, must have a timeline. And with all the documentations, proper regulations for examinations for both the students and the lecturers. So there's one part, a major change we have done. The second major change we have done is building this complex building. This complex building, now even graduates, when they came back, they will say, oh, we didn't have a university. But now we are happy that we will tell people the university where you graduated from because we have now built the university. Because many people really confess that this is the time when the university is actually built. So that is a very great change. And this change is going to continue. Not only a change now, we are going to transform the university into a world-class standard. Because uh, we will build, if we have the means, we will build 4,000 houses for senior staff and support staff and lecturers as accommodation. We will build a very standard administration of the university with 100 offices, various things. And we will build a secretariat for academic affairs is a huge institution by itself. And we will build even 
a fire brigade uh, offices because a big institution like this there must be fire brigade to take control or to help uh, the situation of unforeseen issues and so on and we'll even build uh, cafeterias and we'll build uh, a studio because we'll have a college of uh, Olympic Games development and we'll have a very standard stadium uh, that at any time we can even invite the well uh, uh, Olympic uh, Games to take place in the other. This place will be a university city by itself. Students at the university expressed their excitement toward the administration for the job well done. By the name guy Samuel Pandak, a fourth year student of science and technology, doing a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Uh, it is actually a privilege to a student like me to see this kind of building which has not been existing for the last 13 years of existence of the university. Uh, and we are grateful to be enjoying it. Though we are almost going out, we still feel proud of it because it is the first of its kind for the university to have this. And we generally say as senior students that uh, congratulations to Professor Abram Matoich for the work done. My name is Feli Agak. I'm a first year student, uh, College of Management Science. Oh. There is nothing that we can say as human beings. If I say that I'm going to compensate, I'm a liar. But what I should say to uh, Professor Matoch, it's thank you, because that's the only thing that is a good citizen for sure. Because as a good citizen, you keep on monitoring where you are to make sure you always being a concern to your fellow citizen. So what uh, Professor Matoch is doing is just but only appreciation. We appreciate him so much. He's a good citizen because what he is doing, not like for the other, other people or other citizens of South Sudan who always work for their own pockets but not for their fellows. But as per the case, I thank him so much for the work well done and let him continue with the same spirit. My name is Lola Bramdeng, a fourth year student from the College of Science and Technology. I'm pursuing my bachelor degrees in biotechnology. Actually, I'm so, so very happy and I'm impressed. I'm, I'm so thankful also to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Abraham Matoj, for making a very constructive uh, business here at the university for constructing for us the, the new building. Of course, we are very grateful for it and we are happy with it. Of course, it will have more attraction and actually we have been studying in a containers uh, for the last five years. And of course, this one has become a new uh, infrastructure which will be more compatible than before because all the students will be getting uh, to universities and they will not be studying under the trees anymore. I'm by now Martin Majurundit, third year student in the College of Agriculture, pursuing bachelor degree in agronomy. Actually, I'm extremely happy for this new constructing uh, building. Uh, it is something that has not been there. But for other the students to see such kind of uh, infrastructure, therefore we can actually uh, hire out the feeling that has been given to us. So I'm actually uh, congratulating the professor and actually the government of South Sudan for this initiative. If, to, if there was no government, actually uh, Dr. Professor Abraham Matoy would have not been uh, doing this. It is always the government that has support this public university, especially Dr. Graham Memorial University of Science and Technology, uh, to have this kind of building. Uh, there are two things that have been done by Professor Abraham Matoj since he was appointed. He is the first vice chancellor who have graduated for the first time since this university was established. Uh, he did that 
Uh, second to that, uh, in his uh, uh, commitment, he has done another important thing, which is the construction of this, this building. So, Professor is doing his best. And we actually, in some years to come, we are going to see some more changes based on his uh, commitment. Yeah, my name is Alfred Anyak. I'm a student from Dr. John Grang Memorial University of Science and Technology, College of Management Science. Department of Public Administration. I'm very delightful to the administration of uh, Professor Abraham Matoj. Now I've been uh, finishing a diploma in 2019, but now I'm pursuing for upgrading. But now I, I more appreciate administration of Professor Abraham Matoj. Now the man is capable for implement. The new triple complex building will give lecturers enough space to prepare before going to class. It, uh, the new building, we really name it as a, a complex building, simply because it accommodated uh, the 10 lecture halls, 23 offices. So, and in fact, they are going to serve different purposes. Lecture halls are going to be used by students, and the lecturer goes by to, to lecture to them and the offices will be now used by all both the academic staff the administrators of the university this one will give us more room for more to file more files and it will also give us as uh, lecturers uh, a, a space for preparation because Teaching in the university, it needs a lot of readings, it needs a lot of preparation before you go to class. Because uh, based on uh, what we learn, because I'm a teacher by profession, uh, it is says if you want to go to class, you need to be well prepared so that your brain bec becomes bigger than now the learner. So as a, a university lecturer, you need to be more well equipped than the student. So the offices will be both uh, our preparation centers and work as uh, the, the offices for administrators and also preparation uh, rooms for the lecturers. So it will definitely serve both purposes. So it is really very important and we are really happy about what had happened. It's working as a team is one of the very important uh, assets in any learning institutions. Uh, the, the two vice-chancellors before Professor Matoj I, I don't know, maybe they were faced with uh, challenges during this control. They were unable to, to, to construct such a, a site building. But uh, for our team, we really use all our efforts. We use the meager resources that we have to, to establish uh, the, the institution from the scratch. So it is really, I'm really very happy for what uh, uh, Professor Matoj and the team have done. It is very wonderful, and this is what we want as South Sudanese. We wanted always to start from the scratch and do something. We can't wait until when all thing goes well. Uh, but uh, it is an addition because the previous by chancellors they have tried their best. Uh, maybe uh, they were faced with a lot of problems, that's why they, they were unable to, to construct such a beautiful, wonderful building like uh, the complex that we have now. So we are praying very hard uh, to the Almighty God to give us good health, to give us a good brain, to give us a, a, a strong network, to work with other partners. Uh, in the country so that they will also be able to help us because currently we have a structure and it has not been furnished. We don't have, we, we don't have chairs inside the offices, we, we, we don't have benches in the lecture hall. So it, we still have a long way to go. So um, I'm urging all of us as South Sudanese, the well wishes, those who want to help, uh, to come in now with this help. Uh, to help us uh, because this is a national institution this is uh, uh, for all the citizens and it is all f for all of us and it is for the next generation to come it is not only for us we are doing for ourselves and we are doing for our children I'm Luan 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 uh, the Dean of Civil Affairs uh, in fact uh, this kind of building is improving actually uh, our stay here in the university because initially we used to operate under this prefix that you are seeing here 
and the space has been a problem. But now that with a new building, we will have enough offices for our, you can even see, you can even see some of our offices are not there because space is not enough for us. But now with a new building, we will have enough spaces and uh, this is a great improvement. Uh, together with improvement in the spaces for the students. The students now will have enough classrooms, like, like uh, you can see there, we are having 10 lecture halls, which is going to make great difference compared to when it was only this small container. We were actually having limitation uh, in terms of uh, spaces for, for the students. So this, this, this building is going to make difference. My name is Robert Abujon. I'm uh, an assistant uh, professor here in the university and uh, I'm assigned to this office as the deputy dean. Uh, regarding the development that uh, you have seen in the university here, I think uh, they are really important to our academic work in this university. I came here in 2011 when uh, Professor Ayuan Majok was the head of this institution and uh, followed by Julia Aker. Professor Abraham Matokidal is the third person. Now, when we compare the activities of all uh, these professors who are assigned to lead the university, you find that starting with the, uh, Professor Ayuan Majok, then uh, Julia Aker Duan, nothing has happened like that. We really appreciate what has happened. And uh, what is so interesting is that these uh, new facilities were just built from our own local efforts from the university. So it is really a big achievement towards, our, towards the achievement of our educational goals. The building has uh, one mega hall, that's a conference hall. It is having 23 offices and the 10 lecture halls. These lecture halls run from 500 up to 350. Uh, we are sure that uh, this hall will be accommodating up to 5,000 students. So uh, we hope it will increase our enrollment. We shall increase our enrollment this year. So the advantages of this building is that we shall have more students coming to University of Dr. Jonga compared to 400, 300 students that we have been formally receiving from the Directorate of uh, Admission. Uh, another good thing with this building is that uh, it is a concrete building, unlike this prefabs which we have been in for the last 14 years. These prefabs you are seeing here are worn out completely. If you are moving around, you feel snakes by. Uh, your leg may, may you may fall, and now uh, there's no worry again for snakes and uh, and the falls because the building is uh, is being built of concrete one. So we are safe. The safety is now 100 percent compared to before. Uh, before the lecture used to take place under trees. Uh, you you may see big classes take, being taught under the tree and that tree, and when it rains, you you see people suffering. People running with papers, people running with whiteboards, people running with blackboards, looking for a shelter. And now, lectures will be taking place inside the cool, under the rain, under the sun, what may come. Uh, there, there will be no any such you know, interruptions again. So, we are hopeful the academics will not be interrupted. Uh, most of the teaching staff, the lecturers, the professors, and some assigned deans and directors used to be under tracing before. Uh, if you want to look for a dean of the college, uh, it may be hard. You will look for him under all the tracing, but this time you will go, go into the certain office and you see the level of the student, uh, of the staff, and the level of the dean, written college of this and this. And it is through that level, you go and knock at that door and you get the professor direct. Uh, there were no spaces for uh, for the secretaries and the the other support staff. Uh, you could see one office being occupied by a dean and all the other staff. But this time, the dean will be in his office alone with all his files and he will keep his secrets in his office. Uh, 
the research will be enhanced this time because there will be a space for writing, a space for research, and a space for everything. Before people used not to publish papers, people used not to publish books because no space to no space to do their work. And now there is humble space for writing. The construction of the new facilities meant students will no longer attend classes under trees. Uh, in those containers, uh, the rooms where we receive our lectures are so small. So if the number of students were very many, therefore those rooms will not be accommodating them. And actually, we always uh, take our lectures under the trees, simply because the room can't accommodate the number of the students. So for this new building, uh, the rooms are huge. So every student can get in and receive the lectures in those rooms. Second to that, uh, the temperature condition is a bit different. Uh, those containers during the day or uh, during the sunshine, therefore the temperature increases and there, therefore it will affect the human's body. So for now in this new construction building, uh, the temperature is so conducive, we can stay inside 24-7. So this is one kind of difference that I can mention. When we came here as first-year students, we have been uh, using the containers as usual, and uh, that's the, in our first semester. In this second semester, I, I can say there is different. Because last time we were using containers and those containers, you know, inside it was extremely hot. We were not enjoying the, the, the environment itself because even some of the guys or the students, they usually doze during lectures. So as per now, I can say there is difference between the, the, the old one and the new one. For the new one, actually, we are enjoying, not like before. The environment itself is too enjoyable. We have fans, and uh, the, the, the lecture room are conducive, and even the space itself is enough for, to uh, have the student, at least not like uh, last time. It was uh, The space was not that good for all of us, but today, or uh, due, due to this new construction, it's better and conducive. Learners in Chongole State are encouraged to take advantage of the existence of Dr. John Keteng Memorial University for Science and Technology in Bor, Chongole State. The newly constructed facilities are expected to attract more students to enroll in the university. My fellow brothers and sisters who are always willing of going outside like being in Juba or going to other universities that they think that is better than John Garan. What I can't tell them is education based on a personal character. It depends with the owner the way you have choose to. Even if you go to America and if your brain has refused to receive what is there in America, still you will come back empty. What I want to tell to my fellows is if we don't have what to love, let us love what we have. We have John Garang within the community here and we're supposed to take advantage of it. It's like the other universities and we have qualified professors and lecturers of which we need to take advantage of it. The message I just have for the senior full leavers who may be willing to join other public universities is that Dr. John Garang University is one of the public universities and therefore the, of uh, having seen this is standard building, uh, if you are willing to be pursuing any degree or any program that the university offers, then you are highly welcome because it is now of a greater standard that you can study. In most cases, the studies need the standard building or the standard or conducive learning environment. Therefore, with this building, any student or any senior floor labor who want to study uh, higher institution should consider Dr. Garang as one of the public universities who could enjoy learning conducively, uh, basing on the program they want to pursue at that particular moment. To my colleague students who are willing to join university, uh, Dr. John Garang Memorial University of Science and Technology has a new well-constructed uh, lecture hall. So if 
uh, you were hearing that uh, Dr. Grang is having containers. There are new rooms whereby you can come and study in it. So I actually requesting you to join this university in the new academic year. Dr. Abraham Matoch said as a professor, he is committed to give services that give meaning to the nation. I had a colleague of mine when I was the University of Kratu, I was teaching there, and then he joined me. His name is uh, Henry. Uh, he's a son of a teacher. And when he came to South Sudan, he got employed with US 8. So when he had my appointment to be a vice chancellor of Dr. Yonga University, then we met in one of the hotels and he greeted me. He said, hey, you have chosen permanent poverty. <laughs> <laughs> so I laughed. I told him, educated people are not poor. Poverty has been redefined. There is income poverty uh, and human poverty. The poverty is the most serious thing. But do you know what he told me? Well, but I'm happy that you have written a book which I can read. So that is the impression of many other people. When you are in public office, uh, uh, some of the people will begin to get things for themselves. But myself, as a teacher, I have to be exemplary and that is the intention of all the teachers whether from primary up to university level as exemplary you must show a way forward of good work and uh, personally i'm an achievement oriented uh, person i feel happy if i have done something good and I feel happy if I leave something to be counted in the future. Something that people point hands at it. And that's the reason why I felt uh, I should do some construction in the university. As a teacher, I had to give services. Services that give meaning to the nation. And as a teacher, I wanted to contribute to the development. And the development is to give quality education and also to give quality services. And to give quality services, you are trying to uh, make an example that should be followed by other, by other people. Universities are institutions that teach us good things. And these good things have to be replicated on ground. When we find teachers crying for higher salaries, other people think it is for nothing. And this is where I appreciated His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Sudan, His Excellency Sabha Kirmayadi. When he improved the salaries of the universities, that improvement of the salaries is a real strength and that's why universities are able to do things. You may not be surprised, and that's why many people may ask, where did I get money? The salary improvement has a lot of meaning to the universities. Universities are supposed to renovate, supposed to refer, and supposed to reconstruct their institutions. And after our salary improvement, you can actually read direct from what is happening in the University of Juba. And if you see all the universities, by the way, any university is doing something. Like Africa University, they are renting. And renting is so costly. It is because of salary improvement. If the salaries are not improved, definitely these universities will close down virtually because they will not have the means to make things uh, move, to renovate or even to run the universities. Because this A4 
Mujuga is small, but it's very expensive. And the amount of paper we use, and the amount of ink we use, and the amount of the scripts we use, is a huge budget. He will wait for the Ministry of Finance to give us a pretty of course. These investors will close down because they will not have services. So I feel that as a teacher and as a professor in the university, I must do things by making examples that should actually be followed. I am so happy to be a teacher because daily I count my productivity. I feel that I'm productive because if I meet with the students I talk, uh, I feel so happy and I count that I have actually done something. Nothing made me to continue with the education because I feel that I'm giving uh, productive work uh, to the country. And if I invest properly my energy to improve uh, the university, uh, I feel that I'm contributing uh, to the country meaningfully and qualitatively. So that is why I think that, and as a professor, I'm a human oriented. I feel happy when I do something good, when I have something to be seen visibly in front of the people. And that's one of the things that motivated me to see that I must do some renovation and some construction to have the lecture halls and offices to be there. The former cattle keeper, Dr. Abraham Matoj, who was enrolled in school by chance as a child, appealed to cattle keepers across the country and in South Sudan at large to enroll their children in schools. I really appeal to South Sudanese and particularly the cattle keepers to make going to school for their children a priority. Children must be sent to school. Simply because even for their livelihood if they are educated they will improve their lives and the lives of their parents. If we are not educated, then even your life span is very short. So we need to encourage everybody in South Sudan to take education seriously as an important uh, part of life. Uh, even raising of cattle, you can even raise cattle better when you are educated and therefore children must go to school not only children must go to school children who are already in the school and particular girls must be supported to continue their education to avoid this forced marriage and to avoid early marriage because the girls need also to have education once we educate girls, then the problems of underdevelopment will be lessened to some extent. So that is actually my feel that I, do, I could not imagine if I was still in the village because all my bed, many of them actually grown old, they are unable even to walk. Simple because they do not know what is happening around their environment and they are not able to transform the situation they are in for a better one. So the best thing is people must go to school. And in the next hundred years, I don't think anybody who did not send children to the school will be happy because they will remain poor if they are not educated and they will be exposed to many diseases and a lot of problems. So I really feel for South Sudanese to take education a first priority. With the construction of the new facilities, the university now has the capacity to accommodate around 5,000 learners at the same time.